Cross Corner Podcast. Welcome back to the Criss Cross Corner. It's your host, Chris Canty. And we are back with Christopher Bird, Marcel Smith, and by special request, but not by special request. Walter Witt. All in place for Mike Simpson, who is at work again. Yeah. And he's, and he's back in school. He's back in school, too. So shout out to Mark hey. Simpson. Back in school. I have an announcement. Uh, I am uh, officially back to work on October 4th. So I'll be back in the workforce. It's been a long month. I've been cracking out content. Getting it ready for y'all on the YouTube page. That'll be released next month in October. So please stay tuned on the Crisscross Corner YouTube page. Shout out to the people in the Crisscross Corner podcast Facebook group. All 685 of y'all. Keep on coming. We got more uh, posts for y'all. We, Christopher just posted something. Uh, Jacoby Jones dodging Mike Tomlin on kickoff return. Uh, we have some other things we're going to talk about today from that page, as well as some public Facebook posts that I need to talk to and address because some people are wilding out on Facebook. Hey, about wilding out. We also have my top twenty list, top twenty songs from two thousand and four. Oh, oh, twenty songs. Of time. Yes, but it, that's always been twenty songs. This whole this whole time. I don't. I, I do want to build suspense. That's twenty all. songs. And we're going to talk about R. Kelly, uh, New oh. Hotel, the Grand Prix moving downtown, and other stuff. Oof. Where did we uh, start? So Chris Bird, hey, what's up? How's it going? We got Marcel. Yeah, how's it going? Walter, he's still not on yet, but hey, he's here. His mic is on. So he's having his comic book collection. Oh my gosh! All right, hey, Marcel. These are my confessions. <laughs> that's that's one of the songs, Chris. Yeah. Actually, let's let's get into the top twenty list since you since you want to talk about music. No, let's do this. I love music. Spoiler alert. And oh. speaking of music. I have my Songs of the Decade co- collection. Oh boy. Coming this October. We have the 60s and 70s in October, Oof. 80s, 80s and 90s in December. And in January, we have the 2000s and the 2010s. Getting my top 50 songs of each decade. It's gonna be a long list. It's a long time to prepare. Okay. These are my songs that I chose. I have a list of songs ready for the 60s. I have a song list rest, a draft ready for the 70s. Not because the oh, 70s God. were just too hard. I had, hey, you... let me just say, I had, to get, I had to get a list. 50 songs from a list of 240. I have 240 songs. Yeah, that's like, if the 60s was like hard, then the 70s, the 70s and the 80s, that's like, that's like damn near impossible. The, the 90s, 70s, the 70s, the 70s, I looked at my list. I was like, this is what they're talking about when they talk about black music or white music. Yeah, like half my like, song, like, 75% of my songs are black music. I was like, dang, I forgot about that song. Oh, dang, I forgot about that song. Yeah. You're just gonna forget about a lot of things, but it, I'm gonna try to do the 50 best songs of the decade that define the decade. So to me. So look out yeah. for that. I'm going to be name, I mean, listing off all the songs and playing some of the songs, excerpts of the songs, so we won't be on the show for that long. But it's going to be a long list, a long show. So stay it's tuned. Gonna, for that. Gonna, mm-hmm. We have Chris and Chris episode mm-hmm. on the Chris Cross Corner. Me and Chris are going to be doing the 2021 WWE draft right here on Chris Cross Corner. So stay AKA, tuned for that live. AKA. AKA, AKA the WWE draft to where half the rosters are AEW. That's true. Anyway, uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, we have reaction videos coming on the YouTube page. So I finally got the software to do all that. So oh, we can all oh, do man. YouTube videos like that. Hey. And Mark After Dark will be back in November. That thing's still on? Yes. Yes. We're gonna hey, try. I, uh, we're gonna we're gonna try it again for the tenth time. Let's hey, see yo, how, many green, how many green lights is this man gonna get? Hey man, I'm trying. 
Hey, I, 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 feel, I feel bad because I'm the only person up here who doesn't have their like their DJ name up or their entertainment name up on the screen right now. Yes, it is. It says Witless. Yeah, I'm the only one who has. I mean, Chris, I'm the only one who has that up right oh, now. Oh, you're the only one that has it? Oh, my bad. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> What's up, Walter? How's it going? Oh, oh, it's great. It's fantastic. You're finally out of the boonies. You're finally in the sticks. <laughs> <laughs> You're, you made it Low from the Piccadillys though. to the sticks. I moved from Low the pick, no, I moved from the Piccadillys to the picks. That's what I did. Yeah, there we go. Um, now, all you got to do now is move to the east side of two seventy five, and you'll be good. You'll be good. Yeah. I, um. Yeah. No. That's that's not gonna happen. <laughs> you say <No>. yeah. No. <laughs> well, speaking of that, uh, that's just not gonna happen. Walter was um, like, are we doing like the real top 20 songs? Are we doing yours? I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm doing mine. She was like, so they're wrong. I was like, okay, okay. Oh, just wait, just wait. I'm gonna, oh. drop, some, I'm gonna drop some songs on you. Hold on. Talk to him. All right, hey, let's do it. Right, let's get this list. All right, let's do my top 20 songs of 2004. Oh, God. Let's do my honorable mentions, my oh, four God. honorable mentions this week. Number one honorable mention from 2004 is Caught Up by Usher. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is, but the Usher's first songs it. are the memoirs of a nigga of a foolish nigga that got caught up. Mm-hmm. Hey man, once you get caught so up, it's, hey, it's, you understand. But I, they're his own memoirs then, because he done been in some trouble for getting caught up in a few things, you know? Yeah, that's true. Caught up I confessions, mean, papers, uh, the Usher books. Get ready to sign the papers. Mm-hmm. Papers. <laughs> all right, all right. Number two, honorable mention from 2004, Lose My Breath by Destiny's Child. Okay, all right. That's, that's a... That's honorable mention. That means Does anybody TV. remember what happened to Michelle? Yes, oh, I remember what you... She's still doing yes. VH1 music videos at, at midnight. And mm-hmm. hopefully not tripping on stage. Oh my gosh. Okay. Anyway, um, <laughs> number three, we have "Wake Me Up When September Ends" by Green Day. That's yeah, a, I can see that. Choice, but I'll, I'll allow it. All right, number four for honorable mention for my top twenty songs for two thousand and four is "Take Me Out" by Franz Ferdinand. I, I thought that song that. from the eighties. Yeah, by who? No, Franz Franz Ferdinand. Is that the so if you're lonely? No, not that one. No, 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 not that one. It's take me out. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, that's the that's the same song. But it's a it's it's a 2004 cover. Yeah, that's all it is. No, mm-hmm. by France first. Yeah, no, it's it's the same. That's the same. That's the song I'm thinking of. It, mm-hmm. That's how that song goes. Exactly. Well, it's a. It's a Ooh. She, she, what? Sorry, mm-hmm. bird. I'm sorry, y'all. Anyway, mm. top 20 songs from 2004. We have Rebellion Lies by Arcade Fire. Oh, I forgot about that song. Arcade Fire is pretty good. Mm. Arcade Fire is really good. Yes, very good. If you don't know Arcade <laughs> Fire, everybody, shout out to my friends in Montreal, aka Arcade Fire. Uh, Canadians, please subscribe. Anchor.fm slash Chris Cross Corner slash support. We need those Canadian dollars. You know what I'm saying? Are you are you pleading to the Canadians to give you money? Yes, I am because they held mm-hmm. me hostage for two hours when I didn't have a COVID. Hey, 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 hey! Hold on now. Two hours. They had. I'm, I don't mean to be mean to the Canadians and the Canadians, yeah. or Canadian Army, but I believe half the Canadian Army came after me just because I didn't have a COVID test. I and it was like twelve of them motherfuckers. The Canadian out. Army. Look. If you anger the if you anger the Mounties, man, that's on you. Like there, there were no Mounties; they were just Canadian men in like tight suits. I was like, "What the hell?" It's just I just needed a coat, a rapid test. I'm free. I'm COVID free. Anyway, I'm free. just send me back home. Then I get back home, and our freaking customs is like ridiculous over nothing. Oh, you got some drugs in there, son? No, bro. I'm just black. Anyway, see, I didn't have a problem when I went to Canada. You ain't wrong. Mm-mm-mm. No, I went over there thinking like if you were just like vaccinated, you can go over there. But turns out you need a rapid test, and I didn't mm. know that. A what now? Like a rapid, a test. rapid test, a rapid test, and proof that you're uh, you're negative. Doesn't the car? Didn't you? Uh, no, the car doesn't mean no. The, cards? the car doesn't mean that you're positive or negative because you can still get COVID when you're vaccinated. 
That is within true. the last 48 hours. If you go and you get rapid tested, you're positive. You can't enter Canada. They'll send you back home. Rabbit tested. Wrapping rapid testing, like the test you just put the snot the thing up your nose and send it to CVS and they'll come back with the results. That kind of stuff. CVS. Yeah. Yeah. I got put a. I already did that twice when COVID started. All right, I ain't finna do that again. You better keep doing it because so, hey, people can right. keep people can keep um, getting vaccinated. So you're, you're so this is number seventeen. No, that's number twenty. Rebellion oh, Lies 20. by Arcade Fire. Number nineteen. Behind these hazel eyes by Kelly Clarkson. Okay. Like that song. That's that's a great that's a great song. All right. Number eighteen, My Boo by Usher and Alicia Keys. Yeah. <laughs> All right, number seventeen, we got Holla Back Girl by Gwen Stefani. Say it. I know someone wants to sing it. I'm just, I'm just. I mean, Bird sings it every up. time when he's in the shower. So this could be. Come on, Bird, sing it. B A N A N A N. <laughs> my 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 fancy my fancy football team just took a hit right now, so I'm not in the singing mood for Gwen Stefani. Right <laughs> oh, now. that's a great segue, Chris, because number sixteen I'm... is "Lonely" by Akon. <laughs> lonely, I'm so lonely. <laughs> we might be bad. <laughs> we might be bad people. I have nobody. Sorry, did you say we might be bad people? No, y'all are bad people. (laughs) Oh, who hit that note? Oh, we got the whole words. All I know is that part by Leave that on the recording. Who the hell? All right, number 15, we have Confessions by Usher. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Confessions or Confessions Part 2? Confessions. I don't care which one it is. I I, 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 know. These are my confessions. No, that's, that's like saying, do you like Ignition or the remix to Ignition? One is clearly better. Too. I mean, I mean, <laughs> oh, no, we're gonna talk about him later. Um, yeah. it is his own time. 14 of my top 20 songs from 2004 is Breakaway by Kelly Clarkson. All right, yeah, a lot of Kelly right, Clarkson song. Song. this was her year. What you talking? I'm gonna have my Kelly Clarkson my, moment. Mind you, mind you, this is the year out of shit. Well, a couple years out of shit, one American Idol, so. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Was that the anyway. she was coming off of American Idol? No, she was. She won in two thousand two, and she yeah. her first album was two thousand four, which was her best album. Funny me. thing is, none of none of the American Idol winners are still making music. Ruben, study. Are. what you doing? Ruben, hey. Ruben, Ruben Underwood is out there making Christian music. Really Carrie Underwood still making money. money. Carrie Underwood was the freaking singer of a Sunday Night Football. Fantasia still making music. Chris Allen still making music. Dang. Chris Daltrey yeah. still making music. Yeah. Daltrey yeah. still making music. Mercy, what, what you talking? What you talking? Right. But Scotty McCreary, and, and that's one of the, the well, Scotty McCreary more than all those combined. William Hung. Jennifer Hudson. William Hung never made it to the William, William, Hung, William Hung never made it to Hollywood. Okay. And he was a star okay, in China. But, Wait, he wait, hold on. Pause, 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 pause. Marcel, Marcel brought up a good point, though. I will admit, a lot of people who make it into, like, the final two or three rounds of American Idol tend to go a lot farther than the people who actually win. When? Who is this? Who is this? Wait, what? Like, like, well, like, like, Give me some names. Give me some names. Don't, no. don't say Clay Aiken either. I'll slap wait, 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 wait. Let, let, let's get to that. Let's get to that. Let, let's get to that. Let. Go, uh, no, no. Go ahead, Whit. Go ahead, Whit. No, I was just... Look. Give me some proof. Don't worry, I'll wait. Well, no, but big, what, what, like, like Marcel brought up, one of the biggest uh, examples of that has got to be done for Hudson, right? She definitely didn't win, but I would say she that's went true. Far, that's true. That, that, that's true. That's true. A lot farther she, than I mean, whoever won that year. She's still I swear to God, movies I, and stuff. I swear to God, if you, if you would have said Kimberly Locke, I would have shut this whole podcast down. Oh, <laughs> I would have shut, shut this it, whole podcast down. Shut the whole down. thing. Shut the whole thing down. She's still fine anyway. But anyway, uh, Rich mm-hmm. Girl by Gwen Stefani and Eve. <laughs> Number thirteen. Uh, if I was a rich girl. No, 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 no. I remember that. No, I like the old one better, man. I remember all these songs coming out like either earlier or later than that. You know, like I remember oh. being like getting out of elementary school and a lot of these songs being around, but I, I don't. Remember this was two thousand four. This is Radio Disney. Uh-huh. These are my Radio Disney years, so I know these came out in two thousand four. No, I used to listen to Radio <laughs> Disney back then too. And shout out to the old Radio Disney because the new one is literally just kids bop, but exactly. like. True. Like, shout out to the old Radio Disney, but I, I don't re- like AM 910 was the shit, but I don't remember those songs being on there at that time. I remember them being on there, just 
either like way before then or way after. Mm. Well, I he's remember, a, he's a, I remember a couple of songs, but that's about it. Mm. Crazy. All right, number 12, Wake Up by RK Fire. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Number 11, Vertigo by U2. U2. Was U2? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, I thought you guys were talking about we going vertical. No. Oh. No. 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 Please don't reference jumping ever again. <laughs> Mar- Mar- Marcel. Mar- Marcel. Gonna- That's a good movie, though. That's a good movie, though. Shout out to Corbin no. Blue and. <laughs> <laughs> in Disney Channel. From back well, I'm sorry. Did you say push it to the limit, my friend? What push are you talking about? Push oh my it God. to the limit, limit, because we're yeah. in it to win it. <laughs> oh, yeah. We might have uh, a sing along. Uh, we might have a sing along episode for Disney Channel movie. We not, we, we're not doing that. We're not. I'm not I'm all right. Not back to my uh, top 20 songs list. We're number all 10. All of this together. Number 10, we have Somebody Told Me by The Killers. Somebody told me. I, you know, I'll, I'll put that in. Me. I'll put that in the top ten for 2004. That was a. That's a. That's a nostalgia song. I can't. Yes. That that one brings back memories. I'll I'll give you that one. That one's a good one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Number nine. Here's some. Oh, here's a Radio Disney nostalgia for you. Listen to your heart by DHT. Oh my. Oh wait. Are we talking about the remix or? Listen to your heart. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god the worst version of the whole song but hey that's the first uh, hey the, but the question uh, the question yeah. is the question is is that person actually calling for you that's the question we're asking that's, that's true i, I was a kid so love was love you know what I mean? that listen to your heart and all i know is my heart is on the bullshit right now so i can't trust what it says it's all right marcel you'll find somebody all right number okay. number eight <laughs> It's a Boulevard of Broken Dreams by Green Day. Hey, bro, you know the song, right? Oh, no, stop. Man. These are great segues, guys. These are really great segues. Hey, Chris, uh, this is your list. You want to talk about it? <laughs> no, you're the one says you can't find love yet. And I was like, damn, that's the next, no, that's the next no, song. No, no, no Chris. You, you, did, you did say that, Marcel. You did Chris, say that. This is your list of like depression of a broken heart, whatever, heartbreak. And I'm like, Chris, you got some. These are the top 20, top 20. These are the top 20 songs of 2004. From literally their best album. That's. <laughs> All right, number seven, we have, oh, damn. Damn, I might have something wrong with my burnt my heart. Number seven oh. is Since You've Been Gone by Kelly Clarkson. <laughs> <laughs> Since you've been gone. Hey, yo, how many? Hey, I remember going to the road and you having them play these songs. I'm not going to lie to you on that. What'd you say, Walter? I remember, like, like the roller, like, going over to, like, Bon Adventure with a couple of my friends who lived in, like, the nicer neighborhoods. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <Armitage> Hills. <laughs> whoa, 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 time out, time out. They live at Kelly Clarkson at all. Yes, that's bon, no, that's Bonaventure. Yes, it's yeah, not Bonaventure, Detroit, it's not Detroit Roller Rink. It's Bonaventure, the white people. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like I was, yeah. I was trying, I was trying to put that in a nicer way. But yes, I went, I went to the Roller Rink with some white friends, and that's that's what was there a lot of the time. And I'm not gonna lie, I used to jam out to that shit because it's getting backwards to since you've been gone. Since you've been gone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If I was there at that time, my ass would have probably got two steps in before I would have slipped and fell on my ass and break my neck. Continue. Was, bro, your legs will be up to your ears. You and did. that will be a great day for me. Speaking of that, number six, Holiday by Green Day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Doesn't that usually transition into Boulevard of Broken Dreams? Yeah. Yeah. Was this on Guitar Hero, like the first one? I don't remember. No. I don't think. No. Hold on, wait, wait. Let me fact check. Keep, keep going, Chris. Let me put them, no, don't fact check that shit. List. Don't fact check that oh. shit. Anyway, oh, oh, oh. in my top five songs of <laughs> my top twenty songs of two thousand four, here are the top five. We have number five, Lean Back, a Lean Back, hey. Terror Squad. Hey, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you already know. You already know. Yeah, Walter was talking yeah. shit before the show. Now, now he's like, "Yeah, that's so." Do that the Rockaway, cool. man. That's that's a. Uh huh. That was that was a that was a that was a young DJ Khaled in that group. But that was DJ right, Khaled right. and Fat Joe, wasn't it? Yep. Remy yeah. Ma and I forgot the other people in that group. Okay, Fat Joe came out with a song earlier this year. He sampled uh, "Never Too Much" by Luther Vandross. It was weird. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and, and guess what? Oh, I didn't man. get two shits about it. That's true. Damn. That's so true. Damn, that's a. 
That's a... But these five, these uh, top five songs, we actually did care, uh, give a shit about. So number four, "Let Me Love You" by Mario. You should let me love, love you. you. Let me be the one to. <laughs> Good song, good song. He was the king of uh, music video when he did the one two with his hand. One, two. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I could be you. I could be an RB artist. <laughs> no, you couldn't. No, I couldn't. You know, I remember the old balls to be an RB artist. Speaking of balls, uh, number three, Happy <laughs> People by R. Kelly. Oh. <laughs> Okay, 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 okay. We're okay, okay. We're, we are not, 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 City of Blinding Lights by U2. All right, They're from their best album. That's a that's a that, that's a good one. I'll give you that. Yeah. I like that. Great song. Love that song. We already know what number one is going to be for 2004. Let's, not, let's so. not let's not avoid this. Thank you. Yeah. Say, uh... No, that that, that was ninety eight. That, that, that was ninety eight. That was ninety eight. Oh, I thought it was ninety seven, but never mind. Uh, number one. Yeah, by Usher. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know that song still gets played a lot. Yeah, yeah. As, as it should. It's a club hit. It's a club hit. It is, but it's it's a club hit. It's a wedding hit. It's it's just a hit, man. To make that booty go. Anyway. The mega uh, booty. Speaking yeah, of that, um, you got white girls twerking and Hank Hill with a Hank Hill booty at the club. This. Is- anyway, uh, <laughs> just su- <laughs> submit a top ten list. I mean, you might you might be a bad person. Support the podcast on Anchor to sustain future episodes. Uh, Anchor.fm slash Chris Foss Corner slash support. This list came from one of my friends a long time ago, and I was like, we're not doing that. And then I was like, you know what? I ain't got nothing else to do. I'll do my top 20 songs of 2004. And it, we did this today. So shout out to my boy from the east side. Uh, he's remaining anonymous. Because he requested that. So if you want to submit a top 10 list, go to anchor.fm slash crisscross corner slash support. All right. What you doing, Detroit? Oof. Let's just get the elephant in the room. And let's talk about my my best friend. Oh. Who is no longer my best friend. Okay. I didn't know you had friends. All right. Um, my I, best I, friend. I, I will admit that I am indeed a friend of a uh, crisscross. I will. I, I will admit that. Um, I got you. I got you. I got you, Walter. Right, but this guy, he used to be my best friend on the radio, <laughs> and then he did some things oh, no. in his past. You know where this is going. That oh no, that really shouldn't have went past public eye and been like, oh, he can still do music. But then it, it, it happened. He did. He kept on going. He went on CBS News with Gail King, and he did did a whole special. He did a whole spectacle about how he can't see his kids. But you, but speaking of kids, stop fucking them, Rob. Rob, what you doing? R. Kelly's going to prison for life. Oh no, do that forever. Pause. Pause. I, you can't segue like that. I'm sorry. Yes, I can. I can segue like that. I didn't realize we had become the boom guys here. He was steady fucking these kids. He was out there. He was like, hey, you 11? Come on. 1-1. One, one. Come here. No, one, one. You know, no, I, I, you, you know the thing, thing that got me in, I forgot Ooh. about this because I was, you know, a fucking kid myself. But, um, oh, my God. Was it, didn't, didn't he marry Aaliyah when she was 15? Like he no, said. No, but he gave her that dick when she kids. was 15. But I'm saying, like, we we were okay. With, well, not we as in us, but, like, people were okay with that. Yes. And so my thing was, as shocking as it was, and it was definitely one of those things where it's like, that should not have happened. Um, mm-hmm. Why did it take so long? Hey, man. Hey, hey, dog. I don't condone it, but I understand. I'm different, man. It, it took uh, how many years for uh, uh, Weinstein to get messed up, caught up in it? Like 40-something yeah, years. All right. So it's like, Weinstein, people got to come it forward. Took, yeah, I'm about my, to say, it my took. Thing was, my thing with it was, I was like, okay, I, I thought about this. I was like, hold up. R. Kelly is a black artist. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> how did he not get caught up in this shit sooner? Because like, I agree, it, it took it took Weinstein forever. Yeah, but also, true. Weinstein is Weinstein, and it was 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 one of, them, and probably to be honest with you, still kind of is one of the most influential people in Hollywood. No, in, in media. In me, right? Yeah. Exactly in media. <laughs> R. Kelly, R. Kelly was just a nigga who could sing good that made people get pregnant back in the nineties. Like that's um, what he was doing. No, 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 um, no, no, if, no, if no. You, my, my friend, my friend Rob, my friend Rob uh, on the radio. Okay, uh-oh. I'm not gonna say R. Kelly. My friend Rob on the radio. Okay, Chris, Chris can attest to this. He was in Africa for a concert. And oh he my was shouting out no. to the crowd, hey, no, dude, come on, no. do you have your passport? Come on over with Rob to America. These are kids. What? These are little girls. Wait, wait, wait. Chris, wait, 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 can I do it? Can I do it? Hey, go, go, go ahead, Chris. This dude was like, do you have your passport? <laughs> Did you get your shots? Girl, would you like to come back with Rob to America? America. 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 <laughs> hey, look, I'm, Do you I'm have gonna... your passport? Did you get your shot? He wanted some real tail, man. He wanted some real tail. I'm going to be the first to admit, though, uh, I don't really, I, I don't get it. With our, like, he could sing, but that, that, that nigga ain't look that good. And that's coming from me, who ain't that good looking of a nigga. Like, I mean, when you look back Walter, at the catalog, if you look back at the catalog of all the artists who he has produced songs for, wrote songs for, wrote songs with, made songs, written songs, so forth, it's a who's who. It's a who's who, if we're, if we're being honest. From hey, a, and and, and you, you, you can also say who he, who he slept with, who he screwed, yeah. who he molested. Yeah, I, yeah, I, there, I, there's, I, a, there's a who's who there, too. Hey, I'll I'll get there. I'll get there. But Walt does, I'll get there. But Walt does have a point. I mean, if you think about like all black artists, singers included, they have gone to jail for at least for way less than what R. Kelly's been put through. Then I mean, I mean, Ray I mean, Charles I mean, got a, Ray Charles got arrested for simply singing. I mean, all I'm saying is that we, we live in a we I want us all to remember time, the fact that I want us all to remember the fact that we live in a society where Bill Cosby went to jail before R. Kelly did. They arrested America's dad before they arrested America's well, dad. Well, like, we're gonna talk about Bill Cosby too. My man, Bill Cosby's lawyer, man. He wasn't G. He was like, hey, he did it, but hey, y'all didn't do this. So we get about that. Oh, no, but but no, but but it spring it springs a bigger conversation, right? Like we all sit there and we go, because and also, again, we live in a, we live in the same world where all this shit was happening in the '90s, and at the same time, OJ was on trial for doing some shit that he most definitely did, but that he didn't do. Like, you know, like he he, he, he didn't do it. He didn't do it. The, but the glove but didn't fit. The glove didn't fit. But do you understand my point, though? Like, <laughs> in, in Rob's case, the condom did fit. All right, uh, next, uh, next. Of course. Well, Next guys, thing. it's been fun, but I, uh, I, uh. <laughs> just, oh, <laughs> I mean, I mean, if we're, if we're being honest, this, is a, this is a, this is a, uh, this is a public service announcement from the Chris Cross Corner and Chris Cross Studios. Please protect your kids. Please protect our women, and please, of course, protect our men. Okay, that's men included. Please. Men protecting men, men protecting women, women protecting men and children, because they have to get us, y'all. They really have to get yeah. us. Uh huh. The same way Jerry sent Dutch was off for kids back at Penn State, but we ain't gonna talk about that right now. Look, hold up, hold up. We we got it. We got look. There, there's an entire list of people that you could go after that have been called out. Uh, hell, even that go to like university, even that are like students of universities that I know at least two people in this chat right now have attended, and we're not gonna do that right now. Um, yeah, we are. We, we, we're not gonna talk about that right now. Yeah, just go, to, just go to Michigan State. Yeah, we, we, let's not talk about that right now. All right, here's yeah. a question. Why are why are rich? I don't, I don't get it with these people. Y'all rich, y'all have talent, and you have adoring fans and respect amongst your entire community. Why you gotta fuck this up for kitty porn? I mean, so hey, Marcel, I mean, Marcel, 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 until you uh, until, Marcel, until you understand the criminal mind, you can't really. You can't, really I would, you can't really complain. I would also like to say that they sent Jared Fogle to jail before they sent R. Kelly to jail, and I'm okay with that 100. percent Oh um, my gosh! Oh my gosh! That guy was a monster, no doubt. Hey but, man, but, hey man, hey hey, Subway sandwiches, man. Hey. You gotta, you gotta clean that up. You gotta clean that up. Foot longs no more, man. I don't want to clean. Hear you. So, hey hey hey! So, so some people say some of the kids he raped say he didn't have a foot long, but anyway, anyway, we're gonna get back to R. Kelly and him going oh, to jail. Oh my! Oh my God! <laughs> hey, all the kids now are like 
40 now, so we're good. You ain't shit. Shout out to all the kids or people who have been through anything, sexual harassment, sexual abuse, yeah. child abuse. Um, no, but back to um, the- this is this is a really serious subject. I just like to, you know, crack a, crack a few jokes. Just, you know, to clear the room. And Kelly, up the mood. A few ass. But R. Kelly does need to go to jail because he did mess up a lot of kids' lives, a lot of parents' lives, a lot of artists' lives, including himself. He he messed up his own life doing this stuff. He can't. He he said during an interview with Gail King, he can't even see his kids, and he's tired of shit. Who's is that? That, that was the <laughs> shit. <laughs> hey, but real real talk though, like I mean. When, when we when we put it when we break it down to brass tacks, at the end of the day, it is the fact that you know justice did get served. Yes, it did. Um, it it has been for years, and again, like y'all remember the Boondocks? Episode two of the Boondocks is the trial of R. Kelly. Like, is this? Yeah, I'm watching that tonight. I watched that tonight. <laughs> Ooh, in commemoration to R. Kelly. But it's they but, a, but the question they're, about, they're, the they're about to rip that off the shelves. Tonight, <laughs> but the but the question got asked at the end of, at the end of that episode when Huey is up there, you know, on his soapbox because uh, Magruder kind of used him as I guess his own personal like soapbox <laughs> for the show. Guess, like basically, what the hell is wrong with y'all? Like he is a singer, he's not a god. Y'all need to fucking chill. And I agree with that completely. Like at the end of the day, you look at it and shit happened. And it was wrong. And the fact that there was no true admission of guilt, right, is the it's a, it's the thing that really makes me be, makes me believe that he just didn't care. He didn't care. He thought it was right. He thought it was in the right. right. Like this was the this was like one of the worst kept secrets in all of Hollywood. It wasn't even a secret. It was it was out in the open. It was out in the open. It was, well, and that's the, that's the thing too. It's like, look, I mean, and I get it. You know, I remember y'all remember when that the them tapes came out. And they were like, and, and you know, and, and truth be, and like truth be told, you know, no, no shame. If somebody wants to have that happen to him, go for it. I don't care. My thing is like, if somebody goes, hey, I'm 14, and you go, you as like a 30 some year old man goes, all right, that's fine with me. Whoa, you need to have like, but that that's what, but that's what happened in that situation, right? Yeah, that's what happened a few you times. Your face as a toilet bowl. You can't even count on two hands and two fingers. Not ten, two hands, ten hands and ten fingers, ten toes. Um, you, you didn't. Even, you <laughs> I messed that whole thing up. Anyway, ah! he, he's fucked a lot of kids. Okay, kids meaning people under the age of, of seventeen. People under the age of consent. Which in some states is twelve. You never know. <laughs> In what state is it? Twelve, Chris? No, no. Me and Basil. Why do you know this? Me, me, no, me and Basil looked up, looked this up because the, another show we did, we talked about R. Kelly, and then we looked up the age of consent in some of these states. Some of the states have, is twelve and fourteen, which is true. No, which I, is I, Mass- I, I, Massachusetts is probably twelve. I think it's twelve. We saw. Sweet home, Massachusetts. Do 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 do. I can't. It's weird. Yeah. And it's go there for, for the lobster. It's still Smell disturbing. All. It's still disturbing. It's very disturbing. <clears throat> Bro, real, real talk. I, I can't lie. This, this is like so much going on top of it, but next year for the Super Bowl, you're right. If Kendrick does Mad City for the Super Bowl, it's the whole stadium about to collapse. No, it's no, it's not. The Stop whole. It. Stop it. Stop it. It's not going to collapse. I got a bone to pick. Okay, what you got? What kind of bone you got to pick? No, that's no, no, he, that's he, the... he, 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 he's talking about the song. Yeah. I got, I, yeah, no, I like Mad City is good. Like that album is good, his best song. But you, you can't, you can't deny that the Pimple Butterfly, at least to me, the Pimple Butterfly is probably the best album he did. Mm-hmm. It is. It is. Like, I still bang King Kunta in the car. I left school. I left, like, I left, uh, like, university one day. I was like, let me, the second I hit the main street, I turned it all the way up, fucking recorded it, and hit like, 80 with no problem on the main road. Uh, if there are any police listening, I did not hit 80. This is for for, re- for legal reasons. This is purely a joke. But like the point is, um, I was sitting there and I was like, you know, let me let me boom this out. That album made like it's it's a feel. I mean, as much as it is about you know the oppression of people in society, it's a feel good album. Mm-hmm. Um, but transitioning back, you know who ain't got no feel good? Actually, no. Who actually? I I, I lied. Uh, uh, your friend Robert got a lot of got a lot of feel good albums. Um, you do. It's a backyard party, <laughs> but that that's but that leads to the that leads to the bigger question of is it still okay to listen to uh media produced by people who have been 
Or is it still okay to view media that's been produced by people who have been? I am. Okay. Got, got, I am got, still. I am still watching okay, okay. the Cosby Show. I'm still watching Seventh Heaven, and I'm still okay. watching uh, okay, okay, got, any got, show got, that R. Kelly was on. Okay, can I answer this one, Chris? Go ahead. I will still listen to Trapped in the Closet. I will still also, you know, watch a Cosby Show or watch Bad Album or anything like that by Bill Cosby, or whatever the case may be. And ladies and gentlemen. If you decide not to support an artist or any type of media mogul figure that's um, uh, any media mogul figure that's out there, my bad job, then quite honestly, just don't do it because you have the right to choose what you want to listen to or not listen to, but don't push your beliefs on somebody else and force other people to agree with what you believe in. It's their choice too. Well, and that's uh, that's not two cents. And I agree with that. Like I, I'm not gonna lie to you. One of one of my favorite comedians is Bill Cosby, and like to this day, and it hurt so much when everything went down, and it hurts to this day is the fact that like if I sit there and go, oh yeah, no, my favorite comedian is Bill Cosby. There's a lot of people that I know who are gonna get upset about it, and it's not one of those things where I can sit there and go, yeah, and like yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I'll still listen to your friend Robert from time to time because like. It was the music we grew up with, right? It was the shit that played at the party. Like when you go to uh, somebody's cookout or you go to family reunion, what's playing? You R. know, Kelly. Like, exactly. You one know of, what? One of go ahead. One go of my ahead. favorite songs is is a song um, by by your friend there uh, called "The Storm Is Over," um, which in hindsight <laughs> probably should have put out. But like, oh, the storm has just begun. Well. The storm yeah, that, did not, that did not age well. No, it did not age. Neither did I believe I can fly, but that's not that's neither or, correction, neither the space jam, but that's neither here nor there. Um, uh, but like that's the but you know, and, and it's about you know, a guy who was having trials or a person who's having trials and tribulations and they managed to overcome yeah. them. And again, hindsight is 20 fucking 20, but like actually it's yeah, 20, 20, 20, 21, let's be real. But like, um, it, it's as like I'm sitting there, I'm like, yeah, no, that, that's the song that. I have a very personal connection with um, because it reminds me of my cousin who I love very dearly and the fact that she was the one who introduced me to the song and kind of taught me the meaning behind it. And so I'm not going to stop listening to that. However, I feel as though I can't just sit there and be like, hey, let me throw this on real quick. You know, like it, that that's just kind of the society we live in. And so that that's my question is, is it still okay for you to listen to that? Yeah. But like and then what happens when you face or when you inevitably will face criticism for listening to that i'm gonna face criticism but just like chris said i, I don't care what you think i'm gonna listen to it and i'm not gonna press my ideas on you i'm, I'm gonna listen because it's a good song you know what i'm saying i'm gonna still watch uh, the cosby show because it's hilarious and i'm, I'm, I'm gonna talk about bill cosby once before uh before we uh, exactly. move on uh and like, and like, and like, i i like do this. think i do think that there is a lot of truth to this to his case. However, when they first announced that he was doing this to the to drugging the women and all that stuff, um, I was like, you know what? I don't believe it because he had one of the finest co-hosts. I mean, uh, co-stars oh. on the Cosby Show, Felicia Rashad, mm. and she didn't get drunk. No brain. No brain. Yeah, but but in that same vein, that's. <laughs> That's like that's like, and she was defending him too. <laughs> but no, but in, in that in that same vein, that'd be like stealing from your mama's purse. Like, your mama will give you money. Why are you stealing from your mama? Like that that's sort of, in that same vein. That's sort of that I, thing, I, right? actually actually you actually so Walter bad. Walter. Yeah, I don't think I don't up. think you saw my mama when we, when we were at the YMCA. Uh, she I didn't give me did money. Not, no, no, I didn't. Didn't give me money. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, let, let me say it. Let me say it. Like honestly, you know. As we all know, there's there's a whole long line of people who you know you know whether it was in the music industry who have committed you know very terrible crimes that we all know of and such. Mm-hmm. And quite honestly, if you still want to listen to their music, you listen to their music and such. Right, if you don't want to listen to their music, you don't listen to their music. Like one of my favorite songs by Nirvana is Penny Royalty, but you cannot play a song like that nowadays for what the song actually means. But do I still listen to it because it's a good song? Absolutely, I do. If somebody oh. decide not to listen to it, they don't listen to it. So it's like going into Guitar Hero or going into a Guitar Center and playing. Um... Go on. Uh, Stairway to Heaven. That's what it is. Hmm. Okay. Have you, have, you, have you ever gone into a Guitar Center? And I was I was in the one in uh, um, down in Canton the other day. 
And I walk in there, and the first thing it says is no stairway to heaven. I was like, all right. The reason why that song is like coming up um, is like somewhat like that because it's so overplayed. Well, I mean, and this yeah, one so, so has been playing guitar for over 12 years. I mean, well, but but you but but I, I feel like that's what you're saying is in the same thing. It's like, well, it's it's kind of towing that line, if that makes sense. Yeah. Well, you're talking about a song that is just people quote unquote ban it as a joke because it's overplayed so much. And now it's talking about a song that's a good song, but if you look underneath the message of it, you know, it deals with a really serious thing and such. And people are going to play both songs regardless, and that's up to them. Okay, and that's so, cool. Okay. So it's so. sort of like a, it, it, okay, so I, 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 I get what you're saying. So it'd be like if I walked into a place and started playing Pumped Up Kicks, for example. Yeah. Or it's, it's, yep. it's, a, it's a good song. It, it is genuinely a good very song. Very great I like song it. for the music, but the message but the, the is lyrics, very violent. Right. right. This is very violent. Exactly. Kind of like kind of like In the End by Linkin Park. Great song. But if you look at the messages, what have you, it's pretty serious. And it's dark too. It is very dark indeed. Every yeah. song that uh, Chester, uh, Chester made, it was literally like a ticking time bomb to a suicide. And we, we, we just we just like, yeah, keep on making music. I'm about to say, I'm about to say, Walter, if you really want to get technical, look, here's some homework. Listen to Allison Chains' um, Jarfly album. Jarflies, the entire thing. He just said. He just said. Alice Alice All Chains. right, now we're gonna move on to our next story. Been a minute uh, since I've listened to Alice and Chains. We're gonna, move, gonna, our, we're to gonna you, move our next. We're gonna move on to our next story. We have the Grand Prix is moving uh, back downtown for 2023. Oh, time. Wait, wait. Where was it before? On Belle Isle. It was. Belle. It was downtown. Then it was at Belle Isle. Then we're moving. It okay, back but downtown. let's be let's be honest here. I think it works a lot better at Belle Isle than it does downtown. Hey, 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 hey. hey, let, hey let, let, let the white people do what they do. Hey, look. Exactly. <laughs> let them have their fun. Let them hey, have um, their fun. I, w- I would like to I would like to personally shoot a message to all those um um who live in the city of Detroit who are who may or may not be um devoid of color in some respects. Um it is fair to say that while I agree with the decision that was made to take the Grand Prix back downtown, and I think that would be kind of cool. Um I feel as though downtown is already a giant fucking mess. I don't know about y'all, but trying to get through that bitch is like, right. excuse me, hello? Oh. Um, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did y'all hear the engine that just went off? In the- yeah. Uh, I heard it. Okay, sure. Um, but no, but I, I think that because it be- worked, putting the Grand Prix on Belle Isle, I think works a lot better just because it's a lot more contained. Um, That would... To me, that would be like putting the hydroplane races and like Kensington Lake. You can do that it. That would be lit. That would be lit. It that would, would be. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. That, that would be lit. That would be lit. It would go to down 96. You, <laughs> would run, <laughs> you would run out of space so fast. And I think that's what's gonna happen is we're gonna put the Grand Prix back downtown. That's what we wanna see. We wanna see some crashes. We don't see no winner. I'll, I'll tell you what, when it when when you have I'll one be, that crashes a, like over the barricade and smashes into the rent set, I'll tell you hey, what. If, if, it, hey, if, it, if, it, if it smashes in, into townhouse and get rid of that damn restaurant, I'll be happy. Hey yo, one of them cars going to end up on a people mover. I swear to God. <laughs> that will be my, hey Marcel, I Marcel, not be Marcel, Marcel, if it did. Marcel, this is the Grand Prix, not Sonic Riders. <laughs> hey, no, th- no, correct. No, this is the Grand Prix, not the crew. Come on now. Not the crew. Oh, <laughs> not the crew. Hey, 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 my, hey, 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 this is not just said radio future. Oh, Lord. This does not sound like a map from Need for Speed. No, I'm about to say that Need for Speed Underground. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Loki, they, 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 they could do a whole race on the Lodge Freeway. Like, for real. Bro. They already race on the Lodge. My bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. That was me yesterday. <laughs> How you racing in a minivan, fam? I don't have a minivan. I don't have, I don't a, have minivan. a minivan. I have a Jeep, bro. It's a Jeep. How you racing in a Jeep, my dude? <laughs> it has a, it has a V6. It has a V6 engine. A, oh, oh, I'm sorry. You have a V6. Let me introduce you to like what the scat packs? Like, hey, first of all, first of all, I was racing a scat pack, and he didn't. Hey, he don't know the lines like I do, so I knew all the ins and outs. Did you forget? He thought just going fast was this. going to be beat me. I knew the curve, the turns, and everything. Hey, real talk. He forgot that he forgot that Davidson was a left turn exit. <laughs> <laughs> Mess this so man funny. went through the barricades. Bro, oh, I, I, 
I told, I told a friend of mine, uh, my old car had a a, a shift tronic like a manual, like uh, it was automatic, but it had a manual shift tronic in it. Okay. So um, we were talking, and I was like, you have to remember one thing, and that is, when it comes down to a race, it doesn't matter what car you have. I mean, yeah, if I race like an old jalopy, like seventy two fucking jalopy. Pontiac vibe or Pontiac, uh, whatever. don't say the Pontiac vibe. That was a good car. Okay. But, but my my point, but my point being, if I if I sit there and race like. This old hoopty versus like a twenty twenty one fucking Hellcat. Let's just go. Okay, Hellcat seven hundred and six horsepower. Of course, the Hellcat's gonna win. But if I'm sitting there in my inline four or fucking uh your like, four tempo, or, right? No, no. <laughs> if I'm sitting, there, if I'm sitting there in my twenty eleven Hyundai Sonata and I'm racing somebody, I'm <laughs> racing somebody in like a hun or a twenty twelve Genesis. Uh, we we've got essentially the same engine. It only barrels down to the driver at that point. Like, mm-hmm. how comfortable are you pushing your engine? Like, I I know for a fact that my old car it had 162 on the ODO, but it had a um it only had about 30 on the engine. Like, I'm okay with pushing it like crazy as opposed to. Walter, but Walter, by looks alone, by if I'm racing in the Jeep, people are not going to say he's not going to be racing. He's going to be nope. looking to pick the kids up from soccer practice. I mean, that's no, fair. but on the it's lodge crazy. at one o'clock in the morning, ain't nobody picking nobody from soccer practice at one oh, o'clock. Shit, the, the, lo- the lodge at one o'clock in the morning, a fish, the, the, it's the wild the west. Official speed limit on the lodge at one o'clock in the morning, I, 90. I don't I, care. It's, well, the wild west. it's the wild west out there. Mm-hmm. Go out there, do what you do, man. Hey, y'all Bro, remember when I they, was uh, on campus? I could tell you how many races there was at one at 11 p.m. Right. All you can do is hear be like, hey, you about to race down from Eastern to U of M? It's a six mile strip down Washington. I'm like, no, nah, I ain't got time for that. We, one, we, I, I can't, I can't fuck with Ann Arbor and Ipsy cops, and especially Pittsfield Township cops. They don't play. Bam, <laughs> bam. Look, Ann Arbor. That was Arbor like, yeah, that was no, like, that was no. like, you going forty six into forty five, sir. I was like, so was you trying to get me? Hey, hey, I got, I got one for you. I got one for you. So it's, yeah. I'm going. Um, it was, it was late at night. I was about two, two thirty in the morning. I was out. I was out. Um. <clears throat> I was going home and um, I pull into my apartment complex. And as I turn into the driveway, (laughs) as I turn into the driveway, this fucking cop flashes his lights and I'm like, oh shit. All right. So I, 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 I stopped my car. He pulls up next to me and goes, you know how fast you were going? I was like, I don't know. He goes, I caught you going 17 or I caught you going 65 and a 40. And I was like, that wasn't me, but okay. Uh, he goes, yeah, mean? you could. He goes, you could injure yourself or others. Stop it. Have a good night and fucking zoomed off. And I was like, wait a minute. Hey, man. Did I just get pulled over? Right. Yes. Did Black just, Lives Matter? Did. Hands up, don't shoot? <laughs> it wasn't even that. It was like, I was just sitting there. Like, I was sitting there with my hands on the wheel like, hello, officer? What? I survived? I'm like, <laughs> hey, and 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 our and our police is just a different story, man. And our police and Arbor. because they don't want to offend anybody. They don't want to offend anybody. They're just, they're just too nice, but they're like racist yeah. at the same time. They're like you, mother, you Nick. Nice day. Hey, no, have you no, have no, you no, ever no, seen no, this, this have you crazy. ever seen a uh, a racist nice cop before? Because I have. They exist. I have. I have. They do. Here's the I thing. Too. Here's the thing. Southern cops will be racist to your face, but Northern cops, they'll just send... They'll be like, racist to your face, too. What you mean? They'll just talking, they, 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 they they do in a parking ticket that says nigger. No, both of them do the same thing. What you mean? Exactly. It's just two different ways, man. First of all, first of all, myself, in order to get a parking ticket, you need a driver's license. Second of all... Um, <laughs> <laughs> second of all... Oh, uh, second nice of all, time. there was a there was a time uh, that I was uh <laughs> slowly closing this thing. <laughs> slowly, man. I, I just I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna take a sec. I'm gonna take a second to laugh. So give me a second. <laughs> okay, go ahead. All right. So there was a uh, there was a time that I was racing somebody down 94, and then one of the cops at Vining in 94 on that hill by that by the airport got me, and he was like, "Hey, you're going you're going you're going 78 into 70," and I was like. I was for sure going 100, but yeah, I was going 78 in, in the 70. I'll take the, I'll take the, I'll take the one point. You did not, you did not have the ball. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I was going. Did I was not going. know 
You did not have the balls to say that. Yes, sir. No, I didn't say it. I didn't say it in my head. I said, yes, I was going 78 and 70. I'll pay the I'll, oh. I'll pay the ticket. I am guilty. I'm about to say if he would have got, oh, yes. got me at 100 and 100 miles an hour oh. in a 70. Oh, you would have lost your license. I'll, and it, it was a state, it was a Romulus cop, too. My, oh. ass, my ass was going to the Romulus jail. My ass was racing with uh, Flintstone's car. But like, your weekend was so, off. I was on my way to the Wings game. I had my wing stuff on, so he was like, "Oh, you can go ahead, bro." I was like, "Hey!" Yeah. And, and, then, and then, and then, and then after the game, you probably would have drove over to Nebraska for some. All right, moving something. on. Um, so, uh, we're gonna go to uh, uh, Sterling Heights. The FBI oh, has shit. named Sterling Heights the safest big city in Michigan. I call bullshit. Hey? Um, I'm sorry. Cap. What? Cap. 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 Wait, wait, Sterling wait, wait, wait. Heights. Hold up, pause, pause. Wait, wait, pause, 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 hold up. Sterling Heights. Hold on. Sterling hold on. Heights. They call oh, okay. the FBI has named Sterling Heights the safest big city in Michigan. How over and over big city because Sterling Heights hold over up. Ann hey, Arbor, hold over Farmington Hills. Pause, pause, hold up, everybody stop. Hey Google, how many people live in Sterling Heights, Michigan? About a hundred thousand. About a hundred thousand. The population of Sterling Heights was one hundred and thirty-two thousand four. Oh, more than it's a it's a huge city. Okay, so so it's bigger than Ann Arbor. It's smaller than Grand Rapids and Flint. Definitely smaller than Detroit. So, but it's safe. It's not safe at all. <laughs> hold up, no, that's <laughs> it's not safe at all. So, but that's that's my thing. It's like you, the safest. I'm not gonna lie to you. The, after living where I've lived, the safest big city in Michigan is 100 percent Ann Arbor. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah, the only thing without question, it's, it's a it's an ungodly amount of white collar crimes out there. Like I'm pretty sure I know like five people's daddies who got arrested for embe- like embezzlement. But that's not the point. The point is, like, it's but no one was murdered though. <laughs> No, it's better like, but it's it's a diff- I think it's just because it's a different kind of crime out there. Yeah, it's different. Like I'll I'll I guess I could agree. Like Sterling Heights is kind of safe. They also have a golden butthole, but like we're not talking about that. Wait, 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 wait. Rewind. Golden. The what? golden buckle. The big old buckle on hole. You, ha- you haven't seen like the the golden butthole they have. Like the, they have you a know, it's a butthole. No, no, no yeah, it, it it is a butthole. But anyway, because yeah. of all the because all the asshole drivers on hole road. Anyway, I swear. Hall Road is a just Hall Road is a death trap. They ain't ain't deserve that one. Hall Road is a death trap. (laughs) I'm sorry, with Sterling Heights number one, I I can't get with that. No, I I can't believe that either. Like we talk, we talking about we talking about big cities. I would definitely say that Ann Arbor and Grand Rapids are a lot safer than fucking. Actually, Grand Rapids is not that safe. Hey, look, it really isn't. I mean, in my defense, I spend most of my time in Grand Rapids either at uh in. In the downtown area, or in like the suburbs where my girlfriend's parents live. Okay, so, like, the, the, exactly. You ain't seen the, you ain't seen the rough parts of Grand Rapids. Exactly. You ain't exactly. seen the rough parts. That's a rough where, where Floyd Money Mayweather live. That's where you gotta go. <laughs> That's where you gotta go. I'm good I'm on that. Where, who who is you leave? Where though? Yeah. No school district for reading. Come on, fam. Oh my gosh! Stop it. All right. Uh, stop. Speaking of reading and uh, gentrification. A uh, seven-story hotel with the largest rooftop lounge in Detroit is set to open in Court Town in 2023. What place is? Hey. It's a seven-story hotel. It's going to be have a, the they largest. Do realize the, they do realize the country is about to be broke in a, less than a month, right? It don't matter. The country going to be broke. Don't mean time. the developers are broke. We ain't got time for foolishness like this. Hey, look, as, as no, somebody myself, who, myself, just because the country's broke don't mean the people aren't broke. Hey, as, as, somebody, as somebody who works in construction, I can definitely say just because the country is broke, you're right. Don't mean the people who work here broke. That means that I means swear. that means that means land is cheaper. <laughs> yeah, stuff, the build on stuff is way uh-huh. cheaper. <laughs> hey, uh, uh, speak, speaking on that though, if, if I if I can for a second, this is definitely 100 percent a buyer's market. Um, oh yes, and it, oh, yeah. and it will be for the next few years. Uh, at least oh, yeah. the economy can bounce back, but before it bounces back, it's definitely going to crash. Um, Oh, yeah, so, so I say ready. I say give it give it about two or three years, see where it is. And if you're looking to buy a house, I'd say probably buy a house in the next two years. Um either it, that it, or wait about one dollar down. Wait for the crash. One dollar down. I'm, Here's uh, my one dollar. I'm, I'm getting an apartment. We're rich somewhere in Warren. <laughs> I'm getting an apartment somewhere in Warren where the property value's down. <laughs> No, the property value is down and, and it's next to the, the FBI's safest city in Michigan. Uh, I like where, hey, you leave. You Marcel, leave don't make hey, me do a story leave, on Warren. You leave Sterling Heights alone. They are trying their best, all right? So is Warren, and it's a it's a, it's a hellhole. Sorry, Warren. I, I got to talk to y'all. I got to talk about y'all. Oh, it's a, it a lot of talk about Warren. 
It's a lot to talk about. Yes. Every time I drive on eight mile path down one, I was like, shit, what happened? <laughs> hey, look, just, swear. Like, just, be, just because Wait, of, look, what's going on. Just look, if Detroit if Detroit has proven anything, it's that just because the city's in a in a bit of a rough spot doesn't mean it can't make a comeback. It, it, it is making spot. a That's comeback. The city got it is. Like I, I'll agree, Warren, Warren has had its days. Um, but also I can't really talk much because I grew up in Southfield, went straight to uh Ipsland and Ann Arbor, so I, I really can't talk. Hey, uh, shout I'm, out to people in South were, Oh, you were spoiled, spoiled, huh? No, 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 no. Here's your, no, no. Here, here's the thing. I lived on, I lived in the poor side of Southfield. Like my parents were definitely middle class, but they were like middle class, and that's it. I didn't, I didn't get to enjoy all like the the, the Lathrop side of Southfield. I got oh, to enjoy you, the you, you enjoy the Lathrop hey, Village Frick? part. Rich, come on now. No, please. I, I, I wish. Um, and like, and then I moved to Howell, which was a, which was a choice I made. Um, and we'll talk about that in a different Ooh. day. Yeah, we'll, we'll um, talk about that on the Great Debaters. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I remember. We're talking about this live. <laughs> I rem- no, I remember uh, election day. You were like, "Hey, you need us to come get you." I'm like, "No, I'm good." Hey, man, I, we got you, bro. I'm coming in there, guns blazing. <laughs> oh no, it's, it's good. It's good. We 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 are protected here. It's fine. But uh, <laughs> you're good. You're good now. You're fine. <laughs> yeah, I, I move. I move back a little bit towards a uh, uh, civilization, and um, um, as my mother put it, diversity. Uh, yes, it was yeah, pretty word. much. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, but you know, and truth be told, I, I, I actually didn't have. They were, they were sort of like the, uh, the north. How you describe the northern cops? That they'll, they'll be kind of racist behind your back. I had a lot of stares, but nobody ever said anything to me, and I'm glad they didn't because I sure as hell would have got arrested if they did. But um, <clears throat> amen, amen. I mean, who wouldn't? Yeah, yeah, no, my, my uh, was weird. I was my, a boss nigga, me, oh, my boss sat me down and nigga. she was like, "Hey, has anybody said anything racist to you?" I'm like, "The fact that we're having this conversation <laughs> is a bit of a problem." She goes, "All right, it's well, not a problem. It's something that should be talked about." Yeah. However, no, and that, that was it's it. a that shame was, that we have to talk about it. Well, and that was it. We spent the next hour talking about racism in America, but it was just Which how like, that. That's how that's how that door got open. Um. um but yeah, so I, I I will admit, and you know, honestly, I'll like you know, Chris, if, if we if you want to sit down with me, we can actually sit down and talk for like an hour or two just about the year I spent living in one of the most racist cities in America. We can you know? we can do that tomorrow if you want to. Fuck it, let's do it. No, but <laughs> like in, in in summary, it actually wasn't that bad because all of like the racist shit that happened was like ten minutes north, and I didn't go past that line to go. It was to like, 10 it was like Tanger right? Outlets, and that's far as far as I'll go. <laughs> Right. Oh, not the outlets. No, no, no. But truth, truth be told, Tanger like on M fifty nine, they were like, "Hey, North." You, my one of the guys I worked with at home uh, when I was working at Home Depot was like, "Hey, let me be real with you." <laughs> let me be real with you, bro. No, he was like, "Hey, real talk. Other than the outlets, don't spend too much time north of M fifty nine." And I was like, "Oh, he goes, yeah, because it's a city called ha- Kahaka, and that's actually where everything went down. It just trickled down this way." I know. I've lived here my entire <laughs> life. I watched it happen. And I was like, uh, yeah, let me let me uh, let me uh, talk to you all about that. You know, when I when I worked at this firm in Ann Arbor, I'm not going to say the name because um, I'm going to talk about them in another episode later on. And I will air my grievances. Right. Um, they wanted they wanted me to go to Kahakta. And I was like, right. what's a Kahakta? So I looked it up. I was like, oh, wow, that's up there. So immediately I was like, let me see the manager because I'm not going to Kahakta. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah, like, why am I going to Cahokta? There was like, I think it's Mug and Bops, the gas stations up there, Mug and Bops. They were, building, Bops, a, they were, they were building a Mug and Bops up there. So I was like, oh, I got to go up there and see what this thing is about. So I, w- I went up there with my one of my principals up there, and I was like, oh, this is where the, the clan is, huh? And I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to stay in the car. I'm going to stay right here. Hey, yo, hey, yo, right Chris, here. Chris, at that point, <laughs> that company tried to set you up. I, exactly. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk did. about that in, a few, in, a, in another episode, but not tonight. I ain't never seen a I ain't never seen a setup that clear as day before. Right. And they oh, sent me no no, they sent I'm gonna say this again for everybody who's they sent me to Marion Township, which is the township next to Howell. Yep. They sent me to Marion Township, yep. a township hall. The road is called Coon Lake Road. I'm sorry, what? Wait, hold on, I, hold on, hold on. wait, wait, hold on, hold up, stop, stop, stop. Hey, I got yo, you, I got, I got you, you. I got you, I got you, I got you. So yeah, Coon Lake, right? So it turns out Coon Lake isn't actually in Howell or Brighton or like in that area. Um it's which, is, which which is right, exactly, which is slightly problematic, right? No. Um 
Slightly. As, as I as I had to explain to somebody once. Slightly. Like, Do you understand why it's called Coon Lake Road? She goes, I thought it was for the raccoons. I was like, ain't no fucking raccoons around here. All you see is deer and possums. Right. I see deer. I see That's possums. Right I there. see fucking like skunks shit from time to time. I see like gophers. I ain't never seen a goddamn raccoon in the city of Howell. Like, let me tell <laughs> you, a raccoon. When, it was, when it was the cleanest, whitest city I've ever lived in, it was the <laughs> cleanest, whitest city I've ever lived in. I lived in Ann Arbor, right? Like, it's she's just said, one of those things where you sit there and go, something's not right here. But, yeah, said, cool, but like, you look like a raccoon. <laughs> And then that was when you slapped a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, I was like, hey, do you understand why they call it Coon Lake Road? And she goes, no, isn't it because of the raccoons? I was like, no, it has absolutely nothing to do with raccoons. Bro. I almost did a, I almost did an Andre moment. I was like, sit down, let me, let me teach you something <laughs> for blackish. Let me, let me sit down, and, let me sit down, and teach but you it, something. It's like as, oh, as my God. dad, as my dad would say, let me learn you something, like. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Go ahead, I go ahead. It up and there's definitely a Coon Lake Road. <laughs> yes. There's a Coon Lake Road. And it is, it is kind of beautiful sometimes. Then they, asked, you, then they asked me if I wanted to go to Highland Township, which is right around there, like Heartland, yes, Highland Township, thing, yeah. which is the same thing. And I'm like, I don't feel, feel, I told them, I don't feel comfortable going out there. Obviously, the obvious. And they're like, maybe you're not a team player. Maybe you're not a team player because you don't realize that I'm black and I'm going out there with the clan. I have noticed there is a bit of a disconnect if you if you didn't if you didn't grow up with that right because um my ex girlfriend grew up in Southfield she grew up in the nice apartment but she still grew up in Southfield and she was a lot more aware of the situations than a lot of other people that I've dated um who happen to be devoid of color as some would say uh but that but I I think that's part of the reason why like if you didn't grow up with it and you don't really learn know or learn about it. These niggas, well, you, you're not these niggas from Plymouth Township, Ann Arbor, they know about it. Right. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Set my cousin up. That's just it. Look at that set the place on fire. But that's another that's another the story for another day. Wait, why didn't you why didn't you set the place on fire? Because I, I don't want to talk about it. They they're still paying me because I had it in my contract. All right. Nah! Um, I don't want to say anything bad. All right, now. <laughs> Southgate, another city that we worked for. Southgate, a Southgate move. Stole a real COVID text vaccine card to sell to people. Wait, what are they doing? A, a Southgate nurse stole COVID vaccine cards to sell to people. She could have sold an OnlyFans. In a world where you can easily go in the line at CVS for free and get Jeez, a COVID man. test. and Hell, get the Rite thing. Aid. Come on, fam. Rite Aid, your right. local church, <laughs> Shell gas stations. You know, why not? Why not at this point? In Southgate, at Southgate, BP around the corner, Southgate, like at Southgate, probably the BP on the corner and the and the fish bait places on the on the Detroit River. They could they all sell the vaccine. Uh, Chris, 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 I don't think that's a I don't think those are vaccines. Man. No, they are they are vaccines. Some of them sell them because it's that's where everybody goes. That's where everybody hangs out. No, no, no. Um, I think like I, I, that, that was a culture shock for me. I went down to like River Rouge, Ecourse. Uh, what's the other one? Wyandotte, Southgate, Riverview, Trenton. So you like, went down oh, river. Yeah, those downriver communities and those that's where everybody hangs out. Literally. Like, like taverns and like the fish bait places. And they sell they they give people the vaccine in there. There's nurses in there and everything. Mm-hmm. I mean, I I mean I, I guess if it if it um, if it's safe and effective, but if somebody the, I think it's for the people who don't want the vaccine and still want to have that vaccine card just in case people want to like, hey, you have your vaccine? Like, yeah, here. Yeah. Like, but I, yeah, I, I mean, but at, at the same point in time, if I'm sitting there and I'm I'm enjoying myself at a bar in like Wyandotte because uh, I do have some people that I do I do know some people in Wyandotte in Southgate. But if I was if I was, if we were hanging out and we we're at a bar and this person like this nurse walks up and says, "Hey, you want a vaccine?" I'd be like, "Uh, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> no, no, I'd be like, "Uh, I'm going home. <laughs> I'm fully vaccinated. But like, I'm fully oh. vaccinated, but I still won't go in the crowds or places with a lot of people because you can still get the vaccine. You can still get the, people, the, 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 the virus. Because people, wait, I take that back. Americans don't know right from wrong. Or no, 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 no. They know right from wrong. They just say, don't take away, take away my rights. And rights could be right or wrong, but hey. Yeah. Just to let y'all know, slavery was legal. <laughs> just saying. Just to let y'all know. Yeah, and the civil mm-hmm. yeah, and the civil war was one hundred percent over slaves' rights. Yes, it was. Like, of course, it was. If, no, 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 no. Like, it was over. It, it, it was over states' rights. It was over states' rights. I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. <laughs> no, uh, 
It's kind of overstate. Funny. Man, Yankees. It was over state's rights man, to man, man, Come on, man. This is this is this is elementary. If you didn't learn this in elementary school, you 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 didn't go to the right school. Was slavery really bad? Let's do a pros and cons uh PowerPoint. I swear. <laughs> I swear, man. This go get you. Then you, then you're, then you. Like, oh, the rest like, of oh no, we had a place to live. We, we got fed. I'm like, y'all done, y'all. Who, who done poisoning y'all mind to say that? Oh, that was like oh, I was reading something and some in one of the books. Literally, mind you, I study history. My degree is a bachelor of science of history. And one of the things that I said in one of the textbooks I was reading was like, I don't remember if it was for college or for high school, but it was like, yeah, no, slavery, like slave, slavery was bad. But the slaves had a place to live. They were able to eat, and I was like, "Yeah, they were also oppressed." That's, that's they true. Beat, they did. They, they, they got they killed. Did. And they got thrown into like, it's like, "Oh, we're not talking hey, about hey, that." Hey, Walter. Hey, watch it. But but that's true. They did have a place to live. You know, say like they they were they were five. They were three fifths of a person. Remember, remember that too. <laughs> hey 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 uh uh, um Tom, <laughs> calm down. Like that's hey, no, no no no. I was just I'm just I'm just stating facts. They were no, and, and, that, and that's the, that's the that's for. the that's the. They were also raped. But, 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 but that's the but that's the conversation, right? That's the conversation, right? Like you sit there and go, "Hey, like this is a very bad thing." To which I don't think anybody at this day and age in America who's educated is going to disagree that slavery was bad on a on like a social, bro, on a social meter, bro. It was economically insane. speaking, though. Like in a, and that's that's where like that's where the, like the fight against slaves' rights comes in, right? It's like you have the people who were like. Well, I mean, that's like states' rights. Because they were like, "Hey, um, you're fucking up my ec- like my my economic. You're fu- you're fucking up my bottom line here. I'm not going to do that because it's fucking up my bottom line. You see this here? Like, I make two million dollars a year in like 1860s time. Like, I'm sitting there making in like adjusted for inflation. I'm sitting there making about 150 million dollars a year. And you want to take away my workforce? <laughs> Hell no. And, and and that's the thing, like that, that's that's why people go, oh, it was over states' rights. I'm like, yeah, it was over states' rights to own slaves. Because people were like, hey, you shouldn't have to own a human being. And to that, people were like, eh, I see nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. And the thing, to this day, people are still like that. There's still a lot of countries where you can go buy a human being. And I'm yeah, like, there's, there's, a, there's also there's, there, there were also trafficking, all that. Yeah, there were also laws about you know redlining and uh, you know. Uh, uh, protect uh, covenants. Oh wait, that's still going on today. Anyway, look, if, uh, look, we could, we could, I said this to many people from the, have, that conversation that we're having right now. If it I wasn't mean, for we, black people and minorities, this country, hell, this whole world probably wouldn't even know how to wipe, wipe their own ass. Well, look, no, and we and we can we can seriously have that conversation. We can but, on another episode. We'll say whether it be ahead. tonight or a different night, we can one hundred percent have that. I will gladly come back and we, we were going to there we were going to great debaters after this show right now. <laughs> How many every year? Yeah, let's go. All right, all right, okay. We, we'll we'll get to do, we'll, we'll get back to this conversation in a few minutes, but we got a, uh, one more thing to do. We got to talk about these Facebook and Twitter posts that I looked Ooh. at. And it, just, it, it just made me laugh. Um. Not the first one. I'm, I'm, I got to pull it right now. Now this woman, you know, this? this is a woman that you know I, I was, you know, I was involved with a few few years ago. Um, she's an ex man. I just to, it no, is. I, I, I just, I know, I just said I was involved. She's not an ex. She was, we were just involved. Now, oh, uh, okay. she posted on Twitter. Okay, you two time now. <sighs> she posted on Twitter this story. Now she's a mother of two now. God rest her soul. Uh, Damn. <laughs> I love a man that wants to take me out on a date, but he knows I'm a mom, so he offers to pay for the babysitter too. Now this what? triggered my ass. We're done. We're done. We're done. <laughs> this triggered I... my ass. <laughs> This, he muted himself too. <laughs> he had to mute himself. He's probably cussing me out right now. But this is the stuff. This is this is why women can't get good men. I'm Did saying this right now on the again, crisscross Chris? corner. Did you repeat that again? He said, "I love a man that wants to take me on a date, but knows that I'm a mom, so he offers to pay for the babysitter too." Well, I beg your damn pardon. First of well, all, I don't even know your kids. Fuck your kids. I'm trying. I'm here to get pussy. Yeah, if I have to come home and pay the baby, if I have to come home and pay the babysitter, them little kids are gonna see me fuck their mom. 
Why? Uh, first off, yes. no, no. That's let me let yes. me stop you right there. Yes, yes. No, it's no, gonna happen. No, no, no. Yes. no, no. Why yes. would I pay no. for something that's not that's, my responsibility? That's bad, and I'm pretty sure that violates some child laws. No, it doesn't. It doesn't actually. Okay, so it doesn't. I have, I have lawyers. <laughs> I have lawyers. No, the point. No, the point is, I, I, I mean, personally, I disagree with that statement. Um. Oh, right, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I, okay. unless unless it, unless it's like if I if I sit there and go, hey, well, I'm gonna go out Friday night, and you go, hey, I got a kiss. Unless I am willing to at the time go, hey, all right, fine, you know what? Yeah, let's let's find a babysitter, and if you need me to help you put a few bucks towards it, I will. I don't see a reason why I why I would have to pay, um, to have your kids babysat while we go out. Here's the here's the thing, though. Is that his responsibility? For uh, is she looking for a quickie or is she looking for a dad? For her a kid? stepdad. Because this, this sounds like she's looking for a stepdad. Because no, it, no, no, it no, really no, no, no. This is out of context. This might be a first date. If it's a first date or like a second or third date in the beginning of the thing, like why am I paying for a babysitter? First date, I don't even know you. Much. I don't even know first you. First date. First date. No. Second or third date, okay, I I I can see that. I, I can see that. No, fourth, but fourth. Yeah. but fair. like if we're like dating in the dating stage, and you know that she has kids, and you've been out with the kids, you know what I'm saying? If we go out then. and she needs a sitter, then I would understand him paying for a babysitter. Then, well, no, 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 no. sorry, uh, exactly. Hey, Tom, right? watch her can't but, speak. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> but in in the in the same question, um, or in, in that same vein, like. Where are y'all going? Like, if it is a first date, where's it going? Like, what what is what is the social what is the social? No, my, my point being, what is the social economic status of the of the situation in hand, right? Because I, I look at it like, yeah, if I if I'm sitting there and I make six figures, I don't. Um, if anybody would like to pay me six figures, let's talk later. I will gladly ah! shout out figures. to a uh, shout out to Walter Witt uh, and Chris Cross Studios. Go to anchor.fm slash Chris Cross Corner slash support. All your support um, goes to me and not Walter. Ha ha, wow. jokes on him. Okay. All right, go ahead. We got still a lot. Oh, I got nothing to say now. No. Dang. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> no, but but no, but seriously, but but on, on all in all seriousness and all, all in all seriousness and all accounts, um, if you sit there and I make a decent amount of money and you make a decent amount of money, then that that needs to be a question asked of why again, like why am I also sure? Um, but no, like it, it, if if I sit there and go, yeah, I'd see. Like it, or even still, if I if I'm sitting there in any situation, and you go, yeah, I need you, I need you to pay for my kids to have a babysitter, or we can't go out. That's a that's an entirely that that's an entirely different conversation that needs to be had, right? Go okay, there, go okay, there, we out. And on the on, on the flip side, <laughs> men, but on the flip side, men are. Oh, not oh, oh men. wait, 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 wait Chris, Chris is going off script again. Chris, you going off? That's so funny. Chris, you good? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Marcel, what you got to say? Walter, I'm, I'm trying to hear. Walter, I'm trying to hear you know what, well, what Walter, to say, Walter was like, Walter was like, <laughs> in order for you to go out with me, you need to pay for this babysitter. And Chris was like. <laughs> <laughs> This is the second uh, time. This is this is the second time this week I may have go off script. This is the second time this week. This is but, no, but I, I I seriously don't want to know what Marcel has to say now because like, uh, and, 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 like, like it, it ain't nothing to say. Go ahead, it ain't nothing to say. We don't. No, no, this is this is the conversation that we are having. We're right having now. a conversation. Let Marcel talk. And human okay. and human oh, uh, and human culture. <laughs> Men are usually known as the providers, unfortunately. So I can get where she can uh, say that, Don't but say unfortunately, this. why would I pay for something that's not that I, that one I don't know about yet, or two, that's not my responsibility yet. Well, and that that's where I I agree with you on that, but I also agree with Chris, where it's like, yeah, if if we're if let's say it's it we we've been dating for a while. And you know things are good and all that. And she goes, "Hey, do you mind picking up this bill?" Then I'm probably going to be more inclined to know about what's going, seeing as I know the situation. But yeah, if it's off the top, if it's a first date, and she goes, "Hey, you know I got kids and whatnot," then I, I I'm a little bit more on the on the inclination to go. All right, let's let's. Deuces, I mean, we out. 
Bye bye. I, I I am very happily taken. Uh, I've got I've got two amazing partners that I love very dearly. Uh, but like that's the but I, as as the like as and I mean I'm not opposed to I was I was never opposed to dating with somebody with a kid. But if that situation ever came up, and I think it did once, um, a different situation, but a similar situation where oh, I was okay. like, you know, it okay, yeah. If if my if man Walter, go ahead. That extra help is needed, then yeah, I don't mind doing it. But I want to know why. Wait, hold, wait, wait. Let, can, can I here's, a third thing. here's a third thing, though. Why can would I, I do that? something when I know this date is not going anywhere? Well, that's the conversation. But th- that's the conversation that I was talking. That's the conversation needs to be had. No, if that's, I'm that's only in it for one thing, and it's not like a long term thing. Then yeah, then that's an absolute no. But if it if I, if I'm looking to <laughs> if I'm looking to stick what? around for a bit, then what what? If you went for one thing, you paying the babysitter and the babysitter's Uber. What you mean? You trying to get some? Oh, wait, so pause, 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 pause. So what? Can I get my two cents in? What? What? Hold on, real quick, real quick. What? What I'm hearing from you is that you have no problem paying for the babysitter if you just staying for the night. But if you're trying to stay for like a month, you got a problem paying the babysitter. In that high. No, no, I know, I know, I never, I never said I had a problem paying the babysitter after a month. If after a month you know that she has kids and she needs help paying for the kids while you're while you two are out. I would, I would give, I would give some money. But if it's my first date, and she'd be like, "Oh, in order to date me, like you said, you need to pay these ba- uh, pay, pay the babysitter." Uh, I'm I, like Chris. I'm like, what deuces? Uh, Chris. At the However, if it was my first date, if it was my first date, it was my first date, and I went out with her, and then at the so end of the day, she was like, "Can you uh, pay for this babysitter?" I'd be like, "And I'm already in the house." Yeah. Uh, okay, okay. Let, right, let, let me, why would you pay for it if you know it's not like marcel um, you're not getting the conference you know you're not getting the whole context of the situation she brought you in the house <laughs> you're in the house wait, 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 the couch is wait, right there wait, let me let, let me let, let me let me say, let me say the babysitter. Say watch but well, watch let me say, watch let me say this if um if a woman were to, if a woman were to um you know want to even uh, you know well if i was in a situation like like how you just mentioned the such. If a woman said, Oh, you know, if it's the first day and such, you know, oh, can you like, you know, pay for like my babysitter and such, I'm about to be hitting with the Chris Brown being like, deuces, just like that, you know, with Chris Brown with that and stuff, right? Because like, you know, here's how I look at it. You know, in the time of when, you know, we are all, you know, are very aware of what's going on with, with women empowerment and such, you know, if you actually say that, oh, well, the man that the man should be able to do X, Y, and Z and such. And not actually hold, you know, both parties accountable and such. Then like, hey, if I decide not to want to date somebody who has kids and such, that's my personal choice. It's my personal choice and stuff. If you want to do that, you know, you're going to do that. But chances are, you no, know, she either one, just looking for a quick, for a quick one night, kind of what Chris mentioned a few minutes ago. Or number two, she's actually looking for someone, you know, to actually have that relationship with. And you're probably going to end up playing stuff in the future, a.k.a. Take Russell Wilson and Sierra, for example. Which, after Sierra had, after Sierra had, hey, if we're gonna talk, yeah, about no, it, yeah, we, we, gotta, we gotta talk about it. Like, if I'm in a if relationship, we, if, if if I'm in a relationship about, with a girl, I saw a and if she has a kid, Housewife. if she has a kid, then after like you know months of dating, like maybe the fourth date or fifth date or sixth date, or after that, then I know if she needs to pay a babysitter and she needs help doing the baby because she's supposed to have that anyway because she has kids and she needs a babysitter but uh if she needs help with the babysitter i'd be like oh hey here's a few dollars or 20 or I, but 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 see, but see my but see but see my thing is if i'm like just getting like to know the person no no yeah no no that, that, that's what i was saying too like if you're just getting to know like the right. first or second day i ain't paying for shit exactly because like my because my thing is like wait a minute if you're saying oh we're in this tower oh well i want my mentor actually looking at me you know like i'm an all independent person well my thing is like why can't you go out and do that. Yeah, where's your don't you have now? friends? Like, don't you have friends? Don't you have family? Don't you have a support system that you can talk to about X, Y, and Z and such? So while you're placing, you know, things that are within your capabilities among other people who do not know you that well, who are not obligated to help you out with your things with your kids. Hello. Hey. It's it's common it's common sense, y'all. But hey, see, but see, my hey, thing is, common sense ain't common. I just, I just exactly, but. but but I just realized I'm that like, back there hey. is really bright on the camera. Let me hold on, hold hold on a second. Uh, uh, hey, I'm gonna say this: black men don't yeah. cheat. That's the first thing I'm gonna say. That's black men don't one. cheat. However, I'm that, go ahead. Yeah, however, but however, and the second thing too, and such, you know, it really gotta be a time to when you know 
a lot of men would get would get thrown out there as far as saying, oh, that we're not this, we are, that we're not that and such. But all honesty, you know, a lot of women need to start holding themselves accountable and other women accountable as well. Because everybody talks about how oh, all, all men ain't shit and all, all women are like this. It's like, no, it's just the women or men you've had experience with. Right. But unfortunately, I, though, the people who the people who you've had those bad experiences with, if you are still cut open from the people who hurt you, then you're gonna end up bleeding. Then you're gonna end up bleeding your insecurities and your pain on somebody else who mm-hmm. can actually be a part of the healing process and not part of the hurting process. But because you are a hurt person, hurt people hurt other people. That's and and we're gonna be hundred percent honest, man. Hey, and let's just be real. And let's be real. That, well, okay. Two things. First off, Marcel, that's a, I'm, I'm never asking a refund for an Uber. That's 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 a bit. That's a little. That's a little much. Uh, but but um, that's just my personal thing. But I, I agree with that. I'm I'm currently. Oh, okay. First of all, why, why are you asking for a refund? Like what? The but hell? no. But was a oh, date. you can't take back a date. That 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 aside. <laughs> That aside, I I agree with Chris before he up and disappeared. No, he, he's um, coming back. He's coming back. But that, um, I'm actually talking to somebody right now who was like, "Man, ain't shit." This, that, and the other. Like, why, why, like, why niggas got to be this way? Why black man this way? I'm like, okay, this first thing you need to understand. You've been hurt by a lot of really bad people. Not everybody is like that, mm-hmm. and I know I know personally that I've hurt some people. There's a couple of there's a couple of apologies that I owe some people that I unfortunately aren't going to be able to make because they don't talk to me anymore. We all do. We yeah, all. and that, and that's a, that and unfortunately that that is a really really messed up part of the growing process is that as especially I think as men is that we have to learn how to in order for a lot of us to learn how to be able to be good supportive people we have to we have to learn what it is to hurt somebody we have to learn what it is to be hurt by somebody. Um, and I, I stand by that. Like I said, there, like I said, there's some people that I've definitely hurt that I need to apologize to that I'm not going to be able to. Um, right. And for the people that I still owe apologies to, I'll get around to them as I can make them. But uh, right. the the big thing here is that I, I agree with what he was saying. You know, we there's a lot of talk about you know men this way, men that, and I'm like, well, the thing is. Uh, pardon me and and a lot of same things the same i look at it the same way as a lot of people look at the police right it's like i had a friend who got apprehensive because they saw a cop car on the campus on like the university campus we were at and i was like what did that cop do to you and like cops kill people i'm like yeah that is true but what has this cop in particular done to you they haven't done anything and in the same vein where it's like a lot of women don't give men the time of day because they have been treated badly in the same way that men don't give women the time of day because they've been treated badly and I think the first step for us to be able to sit there and move forward and be able to heal is to accept the fact that, yes, we've been hurt before. And right. I've had a lot of talk with a lot of people about being hurt before and being able to move forward, because the, the more people you get hurt by, the, like the, the more you kind of close yourself in. Right. So, yeah, you have people who are going like I, I know, like I said, I know in particular somebody I know who I'm very close with um, who has told me straight up men ain't shit. There is, she, she was like, there is not a nigga that can do anything for me. Man ain't shit. But on the same end, she was like, I want somebody who can care for me and support me. And I'm like, okay, well, hold on now. Let's let's dissect that, right? So we'll sit there and go, you go, man ain't shit. Why are men not shit? It's because you've been hurt by, like, you've been hurt by this, not only been hurt by, you've been hurt by this black man. And that sucks. That's bad. And I agree with you. Like that, that, that man isn't shit. But not all men aren't sure. worth anything a lot of us are good people we just happen to have a few bad moments and that are like like i said i know for myself i am trying to make penance for the stuff that i messed up for the, the situations i like and the people i've wronged yeah we've all messed up exactly all messed up. what's up i re- speaking on that i remember a k michelle interview saying the exact same stuff that you did and one of the interviews said you're raising a son how can you think about this and that her response still haunts me to this day. I pray to God that I don't have to raise another one. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. wait so what? what? A K. Michelle interviews that, that she said, men ain't shit, the exact same shit that you just said. Right. When the interviewer, when one of the interviews said, you, you're raising a son though, how can you say that? 
And she said, I, I hope I never get to raise another one. Oh, so she's saying that men aren't. She said that. You have to teach and I'm thinking about, like, raise, wow, this, kid, this kid's going to get fucked up seven ways to Sunday. And that's that's the that's the as somebody once told to me, um, the situation with a lot of the reason why, uh, especially in like our community, um, that being like the black community, is that a lot of the reason that why, why men grow up the way they are is because they're raised by women who end up being, and this is not the situation in every black household, I know for a fact. Um, but a lot of men are raised, a lot of, a lot of kids are raised by single parents in our community, usually single mothers. And they spend a lot of time bashing men. They spend a lot of time bashing like the, the children's fathers. Um, and I know I was fortunate enough to grow up in a house with both a mother and a father, you know, like my mom, and my dad, I mean, they definitely had their differences. Oh, they, I'm pretty sure they still have their differences from time to time. If I could give you a I could give you a dollar for, or if somebody gave me a dollar for a time, my mom complained about my dad and vice versa. Let me tell you, I wouldn't be struggling for money, but like that, hey. but, okay. yeah, exactly. But you know, it's, I like, I, and I'll, I'll admit like, it wasn't the best, but I'm fortunate enough to have grown up with two parents. A lot of my friends didn't, you know, a lot of my friends had single parents or they were raised by single parents. And like I say, usually it was the mother. And so a lot of, a lot of people spend a lot of time bashing uh black men um and so when you grow up in a household that spends its entire time bashing what you are you learn to not only hate yourself but you don't learn what you are you don't get a chance to know who you are yeah you don't need you get you don't get to learn who you are you don't get to learn you don't because kids learn from ages from zero to 12 those are your formative years so whatever you see from zero to 12 which most of the black community only sees their mother either getting abused by men or saying men ain't shit. Yeah. What's up, and what's up? or having men do stuff for her that, you know, that have a good, have a good, like a good male influence on somebody. And you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> hey, my, hey, hey, hold on, Marcel. You're, you're, you're lacking. That's why you can't see right. it. But um, um, it's like kids need to see structure. And sometimes in a single single family, single parent community, it can happen. However, it doesn't. And that it structure? stems from it's like structure is like like you and me, Marcel. We we both grew up with single mothers. What is and but mother? we also we also grew up in, in the church and we grew up with male uh influences yes. that kept our kept like they would beat us up if we messed yes, up. Yes, <laughs> we were like uh, like we were some of the lucky ones. Like most most uh people that i met grew up with fathers most most men grew up with their fathers and in some light they have this whole archetype of like you were you a man so you should this and that when you when you're in pain you should be strong when you have mental issues you should be strong and i'm like that's that that's, that's, not, that that's not good for the black community that, that's that that's not good i could i bro i could I could make a cape of how many men had fallen to addiction, suicide, and cutting themselves and cutting themselves, abusing themselves of with all the na- of all the men's of well, all the male names. And that and that's a and that's a, that's, that's that's another big thing there too. Uh, I know, like I don't I, like my my folks, and you know, I I'll, I'll be the first to admit, like my dad was definitely never father of the year when I was younger. Uh, hell, my dad didn't even live with us when I was younger. Um, but you know, that, that got rectified and things changed and whatnot. So I often say I grew up in a house that started broken and got put back together. Um, yeah. And it, 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 you know, it, it, it took some time, but it, it, it's playing out mostly well now, but I I did the same kind of thing when I was younger. My mom would definitely fall in like in that in-between between being a single mother and being, you know, partnered up um but you know like my my dad showed up you know he showed up for the holidays and all that but you know and my, my mom my mom never bashed him mm-hmm. to me yeah in front of you right and she never she never bashed him in the same vein as when i was younger my dad never bashed my mom and like that's to good. me that's good and i i think that's important you know and i i agree I also i grew up in the church i grew up also with like 
excellent role models who would have smacked the ever living fuck out of me if I tried pulling anything in the streets. Um, hey. <laughs> so yeah, my thing, it, yeah, my and, thing, it, my thing is to get to the bottom of this uh, conversation is like if you have good role models, male or female, helping you out to be a man, which which mostly like spoiler alert, uh, men can only raise men, not women. Women can't raise men to be men, but. You need to have a good male role, role model, a good mo- a male role model, not just so just some guy off the street. Because you know it could be someone from the streets, could be someone from the church that could be still in the streets, a wolf in a uh, wolf in sheep's clothing. Um, but um, please just have your good uh, male role models and have a good example of what a man should be. Because a lot of men don't have a good example of what a man should be. Or what they have, they they don't have a, a good role model to aspire to be, and that no, and right that there. and that is what is going on with these men today. I can I myself. Can take step, I could take it a step further. No, hold on, hold on myself, hold on, myself, hold on myself, including myself, because I grew up not knowing what a man should do with a woman, and that is why women on Twitter are saying this man better pay my damn babysitter because men ain't shit. Oh, that, that is how this comes right oh, So what I need to uh, say, I need to say with this, men need a good, uh, boys need a good male role model. And this is a very important one. Our women, our girls need a great male role model because if they don't see a great male role yeah. model, they will not go into their teens, into their college years, into the workforce, into their 40s, into their 50s, if they get that far into good relationships good lasting relationships knowing when to stop when, knowing to know those red flags as soon as they see them okay like Man, they need they... to know that stuff because a lot of these women are going to abusive mentally physically some physically which we got to protect our women out there physically abusive relationships and they shouldn't be in those relationships to begin with because they don't have a good male role model the man that the, the man that the man the when a when a daughter or a child is born, when they are raised by such and such parents, they tend to go to those traits, which is that why is I have a problem with most most of these like modern families, both single and have both parents, even with support, they are just constantly fucking over these kids. Like there's no sense of responsibility, and hell, there's absence of there's no act. There, there's an absence of that, most of all. It's just, it just sickens me. A- a- absence of what? What, what do we, what's, what's missing? Absence of responsibility, accountability. You have kids raising kids. When you're, when the, when the, when the modern family, when the, this modern family, when you, young kids that are raising kids, and I guarantee you, the modern family doesn't know a damn thing about responsibility and all that. And that scares me a little bit. They would rather go to the club. It's a, it's, it's a go, generational gap. It's a generational gap. It's, it's, it's horrible. That's why, that's why if I get a, like a son, I, first of all, in my opinion, and I'm going to leave it at this, as men on the screen, the Bird, Basil, Chris, Walter included, I think it's our jobs to raise our sons better, raise a better man than us. I think, I, I think, in a, I think a big part of that is, you know, like um, my, my grandmother passed away uh, on the I'm 15th sorry. of this I'm month. Sorry, and, you know, all of us have had a really difficult time with it. Um, but we had her, we had a funeral this past Thursday. A week ago, not, not, not today, but a week ago. Um, and, you know, I, I was sitting there. I was sitting there with, like, with the grandkids and whatnot. And my mom, my dad, my, uh, and my, my mom's brother, you know, my uncle, my aunt, we're all in the, in the front row. Uh, and I'm looking over, and my dad's got, you know, he's got a tissue in his hand, and he's, you know, he's wiping away some tears in his nose and all that. And so I went to talk to him afterwards. And I was like, hey, dad, are you right? He goes, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm like, yeah, I, I saw you there. He goes, no, I, it was something to my eye. And I think it needs to be said nowadays is that we're starting to get to a point now where men are starting to understand that it's all right to be emotional. I know I've had difficulty with this myself, and I'll be the first to admit, and you can you can, you can ask my partners. Like I said, I, I, I have two amazing partners, and I love them dearly. Um, but you can, ask, you can ask either one of them, and they'll both tell you that I don't like to show emotion that much. Uh, which is something that I'm currently working on. Um, 
And I think, I think it's important for men to understand that it's okay to show that weakness, um, especially to the people they love, uh, because there, there's a bit of a disconnect there. Like if I, if I sit there and I'm like the tough guy all the time, but I've got issues going on that I don't ever tell you about. And I can say this from personal experience and it, it just, it doesn't end well. It doesn't. Um, yeah. And I, and I think, and I think that's something, and I agree. I think it, I, I think it becomes a job of our generation on to understand that it's okay for men to have emotions. It's okay for men to be, you know, sad, happy, angry, in the same vein, it's okay for women to be sad, happy, angry, whatever. Men are allowed to be emotional as well. We may not be emo- like we may not be emotional in nature, but we are allowed to have emotions. And I think that is something that um, the previous generations have kind of neglected. Um, which you know, it's 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 it it's not fair to them. It's not fair to us. But that's just how they're raised. You know, like men were the tough guys. They were the ones who, you know, yeah, how dare you show emotion? How dare you be this way? You know, you're strong, you're you're independent, you know, do that. And the truth of the matter is there are some men out here who are dependent on their on their spouses, on their partners, on their girlfriends, whoever they boyfriends, whoever they want to call. They're dependent on them, they're dependent on the people around them, and they're emotional as all hell. And that's oh, and I think what we need to understand and we need to make sure they understand is that is okay. You know, there's nothing wrong with being who you are on, like who you actually are. You know, we all project an outward appearance of ourselves. I, I do it too. I know for a fact I do it all the time. But if you ask me how I'm actually doing on the inside, like right now, I'll tell you right now, I'm an emotional wreck. I still am. I'm still trying to. I'm still trying to process the feelings of what happened on the 15th of, the, of September. Like I, there are things I'm still trying to get through. Um, understood. understood. But uh, exactly. But you know that that there are things that we uh that we're, we're trying to move through but at the same time I, I know there's a lot of pushback from society because again i'm a man i'm not only am i a man i'm a 25 year old black man mm-hmm. you know like I, i'm expected to be this kind of way and i'm not and uh i faced a lot of criticism for being who i wanted to be um inside of the black community and i think that needs if we if we want to truly better ourselves as a society if we want to if we want to make sure that like the next generation goes a lot farther than we can i know for a fact that wh- whatever kids i have male female however they decide to call themselves the first thing they're going to know is that it's okay to be it's okay to feel how they want to feel you know it's okay to have those emotions it's okay to sit there and be like you know what today i'm sad cuz you know what today I'm sad, you know, like the, those are things that right. we don't talk about. And especially in our community, we don't talk about that enough. And I think that is one of the biggest issues. And that's why you have so many men who are cutting themselves, who are committing suicide, who are injuring, dangering others, because they don't have those conversations. They have all this bottled up like regression and anger that they refuse to get out. And then once it comes out, it comes out in the worst possible way. Right. Sensitivity is what connects us to human nature. As yeah. well as gets us out of the most most horrible shit. Sometimes you just need that person to cry on. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that was that was that was pretty good. I was gonna talk a little, little bit more about the Facebook posts, but all right. We kinda we kinda ran over. <laughs> it's eleven hey, o'clock. To think, <laughs> all, to think all of this came from that one Facebook post. We got we had a lot on our chest, man. Hey, hey, I like it though. Wait, uh, out of curiosity, what's what's the next Facebook post? But yeah, we do we have time for that? Uh, no, we don't have enough time for that. We can talk about it next time. Dang it. All right. Uh, yeah, thanks. Back. He's 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 on the phone with his girlfriend right now. So yeah, we can we can talk we need about more that conversations later. like this, not just oh, as, yeah, like, I like group, as like as like everyone involved in our lives. Yeah, we can talk. We can do this more on the on the show. I usually like to like talk about music and movies and stuff because that's what I like to do. To do like I'm start, Corner. You know what? I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna start a gaming channel for this for this podcast. Just talk about games, anime, superheroes, all that shit. Hmm. I do you one better. If you wanna I need a co-host though. Hey, if if you wanna if you wanna go up and we can actually sit there and play some games while we talk, because I know I've I've been full disclosure, I was playing Minecraft until about like five minutes ago. <laughs> Bro, Minecraft is pretty good, man. I ain't gonna lie. Minecraft, though. 
Like I, 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 I've been, I'll game and talk and we can game and talk. And, you know, it's, it's just, you know, as time goes and we just continue the conversation, I'm definitely down. Uh, catch me when I'm free, which is almost impossible. So. So there's going to be no show. Uh. <laughs> from, this conversation, from this conversation, I really wanted to know when does all this tough guy, man shit started to happen? It's always been since the beginning of time. Um, if you if you want it, if you want an actual day, I would say Mr. History Guy. Well, no, but you you're 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 kind of right. Um, but even then, we we kind of have evidence that men, are especially in like the the pre agricultural societies, back when we were a lot more hunter hunter gatherer. I was about to say that. Um, no, but the, here here's the thing: we now have evidence that suggests that men and women kind of did the same task. So just because you were a man doesn't necessarily mean you went out and you were like a hunter or a gatherer. Like, yes, you did. Like, you were like a hunter. But there were times when men would go out and they would gather things like for the house in the same vein that there were some there were some areas where women would also go out and go hunting. So and here's the and here's the here's here's the thing that people don't understand. I might be here's the here's the thing that here's the thing that kids don't understand. Here's the thing that we went through generations of talking about hunter gather what, what you just said do you know that when you hunt something you might die so some of these women or men were single did you know parents. if you gather some shit you might die hey did you know that 100 percent of people who are born will die like right what? like they like, weren't all just uh do two parent homes with strong men and nurturing women they well, were strong women. They were strong men. But <laughs> in, in that vein, and when we started switching to ag- like agrarian societies, that agricultural based society, that's when we started to see the rise of the patriarchy. Yeah, you know, it was more like the like the men would do a lot of uh, the more like huff and buff chores, and the women. But that doesn't always happen. There are there is evidence. Not only is there evidence, there are still several societies on this planet today that have matriarchal societies where the women are the ones who go out and they do a lot more of like what we would generally consider manly chores yeah and they're um, they're, they're in uh they're in the uh serengeti of africa they're called lions uh I'm put, well, go ahead go ahead this is like, that's like one of the few well, points in history that like men and women were equal there there are um yes. there are definitely some points where that happens um the problem is not that there's a problem with with equality in that the problem is they oftentimes got influenced by patri- like by the patriarchy and patriarchal societies which changed their viewpoint which made them go hey um i can throw you over a cliff so i'm gonna say what goes <laughs> um you know like uh just just right. in, that, in that in that vein um of the men of like the men being like well that society seems kind of cool they're progressing a lot better than we are. Let's follow their rules. Um, Cause yeah, you would, you would have people who would make names. Um, for example, in the ancient, in ancient Greece, right. You, you, you know, everybody knows like Sophocles, Socrates, Pericles, all of those like uh, Thucydides and whatnot. You, you can sit there and list off a name of Greek, like a, a name of ancient Grecians and be like, Oh, I know those people. Um, but and like in the same vein, you also had like uh, in Egypt, you had Nefertiti, you had Cleopatra, who were by far two of the strongest uh, people to ever lead Egypt. Um, but you know, and you've got other, you've got some other people. Like for example, um, it was Lady. Uh, there was a uh, what was it in the city state of Lesbos, the Greek city state. The reason, like for example, quick quick minor detour, we have the term lesbian. Um, or Sapphic, and it comes from Sappho, who was a lady in the Greek city state of Lesbos, who was known, who was known throughout like all of Greece for only being a great person, but also for being somebody who liked to lay, for being a woman who liked to lay with women, which was frowned upon, but not illegal in in, in ancient Grecian society. Um, and Greek so, Romans like, had pretty much orgies for Saturnalia, so that doesn't surprise yeah. me one bit. We don't have a time for we don't we don't, we don't have time for Saturnalia. Yeah, we, don't have to, we, we, we already we already talked about R. Kelly, so I don't want to talk about orgies right now. Fair, um, but no, but but that's the thing. It's like you you have a lot of ancient women, or you have a lot of women in like the ancient societies who were great, who were fantastic, who were who were these like massive people who did who were able to have all this influence and wealth, and so much so like the the greatest ruler in Hawaii back when Hawaii was actually its own nation was their queen 
not their king, but their queen. I cannot remember her name, and that that sucks. And I am sorry, but you know, it sucks. But that that shows <laughs> history is written by the winners. <laughs> but in in the same vein, you look at a uh, um, England, right? Queen Victoria is regarded as one of the greatest monarchs in English in English society. You know, she she stabilized the people. I mean, for example, we had like. Do you a correction? Is uh, like is is there a Henry the Eighth time? Like no, it's just the it's the it's the reign of the Tudors. That's what that is, right? In the same yeah. vein, it's like you have the Victorian era, you have you have the Edwardian era, you have the Tudor era. You don't have the King Henry the Eighth era. Right. Um, so yeah, like and you know, Queen Victoria again was regarded. She's the she is the reason why wearing black for mourning is as popular as it is. Mm-hmm. Um, I forgot she, about that. Yeah, she's the reason, and like her, her reign was so, her reign was great. Her reign was good. Her reign was so like far advanced in some areas that we still look at her era and not only that, they, they formed a counterculture based on that. Steampunk is purely based in the Victorian era. Mm-hmm. And it, yeah, and not all of it's all because of her, but a lot of it has to do with how she steered England in her rule, um, which I, I think a lot of people, a lot of people don't recognize, they don't think about, or they just, put uh, they they forget about that um which shouldn't be forgotten and so women have as much of a place in society as men do and they always have in the same sense of like as in the same back to draw back men uh and the women have the same sense to go out and hunt as the same way men did it's the same way that men have the same sense to go out and you know gather berries as much as women did so that that's that's sort of how that all played out right okay that was good that was a good history lesson from professor walter witt uh, uh we gotta cut the episode uh that was, that's another edition of crisscross corner thank you walter witt marcel smith crisscross and chris bird crisscross signing off stay safe social distance because we're still in covid and be nice to each other <laughs>